Oh, hell yeah, Microsoft announces an AI that records everything you see and you do on your computer. Whoa, that's crazy, man. You know, when I say I don't use Windows or I don't trust Microsoft, this is one of the reasons why I don't, okay? The last thing I ever thought about was having a digital tape running and recording every single thing that I did on my computer. Dog, that ain't artificial intelligence. That's a videotape, okay? That's a surveillance camera. <laughs> Now, to understand, I'm going to sit here and demystify things because I've seen a lot of people talk about this in the last day because Microsoft basically had a huge event where they were showcasing Microsoft Copilot plus PC, okay? So for anybody that doesn't know what Copilot is, it's basically Microsoft AI. If you use Windows 11, you'll probably notice in the bottom right corner, there's a little button that you click on and it opens a cute little chat bot. And in that chat bot, you can use it to generate images, ask it to search things for you, or do anything Windows related. Microsoft really wants you to use an artificial intelligence. Dog, they are installing ED right to your system, okay? So you can just basically have a little AI pal that does everything for you. Microsoft is bringing back fucking Clippy, okay? And they're making sure it can do things like removing backgrounds off of like images and whatnot. And of course, this is Microsoft's big uh, push. And it's one of the reasons why utilizing Microsoft operating systems going into the future are going to have some kind of heftier requirements as compared to previous releases, okay? This is like using Windows Vista all the way from Windows XP. All of a sudden the requirements jump up and Microsoft introduces a whole slew of features. A lot of which most people really don't give all that much of a care about. So to give you an idea, Microsoft has put a lot of money into artificial intelligence to the point where they've poured more than $13 billion into working with OpenAI. So Microsoft really wants artificial intelligence to be like the future. And they're not just using it for, again, Microsoft products. Well, I guess technically they are using it just for Microsoft products, but they're not just using it for people in the operating system space. For instance, they're using it to actually use inside things like video games, for instance. So AI can assist you while you play Microsoft, where it comes up with recipes or identifies shit on screen. So instead of looking up a guide like we used to, we can just use our AI pal to tell us about what the fuck's going on in the game, okay? Hey buddy, tell me the best places to grind in this RPG. And it probably will look up things for you. Now on the surface, this sounds kind of cool, but then you start peeking into some more of their actual like AI features. And one of them is Recall, which has been getting the internet kind of freaked out a little bit. So this is a five second clip from Microsoft Windows' like YouTube channel where they showcase how recall works. So right here, there's a bar at the top that allows you to go all the way from the current time to back to like June 19. And inside this one application, which I believe is Microsoft Edge, they can actually look back and see just what they were doing on a specific day. So it's kind of like that time machine shit from, uh, you know, Apple where you could like recover files that you deleted or something. Here you're just looking at stuff that you did on your computer. Now, maybe this is useful in some key ways, but there are people rightfully freaked out about the fact that Microsoft is straight up spying on them <laughs> through their computer. Now, that's a bit of a misnomer because to understand Microsoft is not downloading this information as far as they claim or uploading it to their cloud. This is all supposed to be processed locally. So I decided I'm gonna read through exactly what Microsoft said, just so we can get the actual facts and not the fear mongering in this situation. So according to Microsoft, what this is, is they wanna build like the newest, most powerful, most secure Windows computers imaginable. And to do that, they brought a new system architecture that brings the power of the CPU, the GPU, and something they call the Neural Processing Unit or the NPU. Now, for anybody that doesn't know what an NPU is, these are like AI accelerators. So right now, in order to function with artificial intelligence, we need to have specific pieces of hardware that accelerate the type of calculations and computations AI software needs. So Microsoft wants to implement this, or at least have it implemented in actual pieces of hardware. So what they've said is Copilot plus computers can now achieve a level of performance never seen before. They are up to 20 times more powerful and 100 times as efficient for running AI workloads and delivering that AI acceleration. So they basically say it outperforms Apple by 58% and like 
multi-threaded performance, blah, blah, blah. But the point is they have specific hardware to assist that co-pilot system that they have bundled with Microsoft systems going in forward. They've also said all of this shit comes secured out of the box, meaning that their Pluton security processor is going to protect systems and make sure that everything stays up to date. And if you're wondering about architecture and emulation and compatibility, Microsoft also talks about something known as Prism, where if your apps don't work underneath ARM processors, which is what the processor for this is, then they will have an emulator that, from my understanding, converts x86 software to ARM. So if you have things like video games or specific applications, it will work underneath their operating system. So it's kind of cool stuff to come around. It seems like the world, at least as far as OEM hardware, like laptop wise, is shifting to ARM processors, which means we're gonna have like full day battery lives, more efficient systems, cooler systems, so on and so forth. In fact, most big computers, uh, one good example is Apple. Their entire like desktop laptop lineup, the MacBooks, the Mac Pros, they are all running ARM-based chips, M1, M2, M3, and soon M4. They're not even touching x86 processors, which is what your gaming laptop, gaming computer, Steam Deck, Le Legion Go, whatever device you have right now that you use to game under. In fact, most of your desktop devices. Now, when looking at the situation, they said co-pilot computers leverage powerful processors on their systems. And because of this, they are designed to run locally, directly on the device. And that removes previous things like latency, which means instead of, you know, opening up Copilot and talking to it, and then it having to send your input to a server and send the result back, all of this can locally be processed on your local system. And you can kind of do this today if you wanted to. There are plenty of tools like GPT for all, where you can get actual chatbots running underneath your actual computer right here. In fact, there's Cobalt CPP, which allows you to, again, set up a web-based chatbot on your local system. You've got Ubabuga, all right, which is another text generation web UI. The names are kind of wild, but if you want to run a local AI, you can download all of these tools because the big benefit of it is you don't actually send your information out of your device. It's all running locally. So you can, you, you don't have to worry about privacy or any of, the, any of that nonsense. And that's kind of the thing that Microsoft wants to bring to the table. Microsoft even made an incredibly small but powerful model, the Phi 3, which allows, from my understanding, to get this stuff running locally on a device. Microsoft doesn't want you to offload the information to a server because I assume it's gonna be cheaper for them down the road because they don't have to worry about the bandwidth with stuff. And it also means that people can be given that sense of security, knowing that all of their information runs locally on the device, which is ultimately a net benefit. When they talk about that recall feature, they said that all of the stuff is stored entirely on your device. Your snapshots are yours, they stay locally on your PC. You can delete individual snapshots, adjust and delete ranges of time in settings, and pause at any point right from the icon in the system tray on your taskbar. So you have, I guess, full control and it's all locally stored. And that's what Microsoft says. So you kind of have to sit down and fucking believe them at their word, okay? Now for me, I don't trust Microsoft. I don't trust Windows. And that's one of the reasons I put my money where my mouth is, okay? I have been a Linux user for years, okay? I've specifically said I have used Linux constantly. I pretty much use this as my daily driver. In fact, right now, as I'm playing this, gaming underneath it, playing GTA 5, is something that, you know, probably wouldn't have been possible several years ago. Using Linux as a daily driver is something I've made videos on from time to time. I've shown it literally months ago where I was installing Linux Mint and showing people literally how easy it was. And it's easier in some cases than using just Windows right out of the box. It's intuitive. It's gotten to the point where I think most people who just play a few games and they just use their system can use Linux as they do Mac OS or Windows. You don't need to use Windows, okay? If you're worried about Microsoft spying on you, switching to Linux is incredibly easy. But again, I really don't think most people in this case are gonna care. I think most people are still gonna use Microsoft despite constantly tweeting and saying that, oh, they're spying on us. You have options. You don't have to specifically use them. But anyways, let's get back to the meat and potatoes at hand. Now, these kind of computers are currently not available yet. They will be available this June from actual, uh, you know, OEMs like Acer, Asus, Dell, HP, Lenovo, and Samsung. And these are these are computers that are going to start at around a thousand bucks. These devices are up to two hundred dollars less than similar spec devices, and I think they're comparing them to like the iPads or you know MacBooks or anything. 
So here's, again, a situation where it also comes down to security as well. For instance, Microsoft is saying this is gonna be secured locally on your device. Now, anything that is recording your system, okay, and taking snapshots periodically is data that, you know, people are rightfully worried about, could it be hacked and hackers, you know, ransom your system, exfiltrate this data, and can now look through your screenshots, your history, and, you know, do nefarious things with. And from my understanding, all right, and please correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of this information is supposed to be encrypted relatively well. So even if you do get hacked and this information does get stolen by a hacker, hopefully it will be secure enough and encrypted to the point where hackers can't really do anything with it. And Microsoft still says that you can turn this shit off for now. Another cause for concern over here is even though that this is specifically for the Snapdragon X series processors, right? And again, this is just the start. You know, processors down the road, even if you're in the x86 camp, will probably have to level out and the requirements will probably have to be met by Microsoft's OEMs down the road. I don't doubt this. I don't actually feel this won't be a thing that happens. But of course, looking into what they've got over here, as they said, recall will not take snapshots of certain kinds of content. So including the private web browsing sessions in Microsoft Edge and anything that's protected with DRM like Netflix application or Netflix movies or any DRM protected video content. It does say that recall does not perform content moderation. So it will not hide info such as passwords or financial account numbers. And that data may be in snapshots that are stored on your device. So even if this is encrypted, it's probably ideal not to have this stored on your device. Uh, just again, it, it's, it's, <laughs> I don't think this is something many people will find any actual utility out of, okay? And I don't think it's good to have screen recordings of points where you're dealing with tax information or anything sensitive just stored on your device, even if it is encrypted and it's supposed to stay on the system. Now, again, this is Microsoft's sort of like game. And it's because of this that you started to have like actual tools like ONO's Shut Up 10 Plus Plus, which is a anti-spy tool for Windows 10 and 11 that is designed to turn off all of these telemetry features for Microsoft products. In fact, there are entire free GitHubs of projects like PrivateZilla, which allow you to turn off all of these features that, again, relate to privacy, Microsoft's Cortana, bloatware, and various app permissions. I think, personally speaking, if you are using any fucking operating system that almost requires you to download tools like this to cut down on the privacy and spying that can potentially happen, you probably fucking shouldn't use that operating system, right? You probably should switch to something that you can trust. This is a sign of people that have no goddamn trust for their system. And you might be sitting here and saying, but Muda, I need Microsoft to do this specific thing for me. Look, at the end of the day, Linux is not far off from being a daily driver pattern, okay? A lot of people who game on things like the Steam Deck have inadvertently switched to Linux saying that maybe it's not so bad. It actually feels a lot like Windows. There might be a learning curve. There always is to new pieces of software or hardware. But typically by taxing yourself and learning something, you can free yourself from a lifetime of worrying about you being spied on, your privacy being encroached on, or your computer effectively being turned into ashes just because you don't meet some arbitrary system requirement that Microsoft brings in. Now, there's gonna be people who say that obviously this is relegated specifically to those Copilot Plus PCs. Now, again, this is just for now. Down the future, AMD and Intel, the processors, the companies that we use for our big computers now are eventually going to be matching up to spec. So these kind of tools are going to be part of Windows and they're going to be in everyone's life at some point down the road when you use a future version of Windows 11 or you update to something like Windows 12 where this is just basically caked into the system to begin with. So yeah, these are Microsoft's AI features and there are people that are rightfully worried about Microsoft recording everything you do because that's what they're doing. They are effectively recording you and screenshotting your system. And if that sounds creepy to you, it probably is a further extension of how you're thinking privacy focused. And it's probably worthwhile switching off from Microsoft products to Linux or something else. Look, I use Windows exclusively just to play Rainbow Six Siege on that computer back there. I might occasionally use Windows in a virtual machine just to play certain games with enhanced graphical features that aren't currently available underneath Linux for now. But understanding Microsoft's place in the future of their company 
The last thing I ever want to do is use Microsoft products. I have no interest in AI functionalities or dedicating pieces of my actual computer hardware to AI tasks like recall that I personally will never use in any feature going forward. I'm not saying all AI is fucking useful. There's some things in this entire thing that I think are kind of cool, but in general, I really don't think the, the, the direction Microsoft is taking is interesting me and many of other people out there. I think one of the important like uh, actual exchanges I've seen regarding this topic was actually on Reddit when one of the users primarily was talking about running multiple tools like ShutUp10 on their system, like disabling updates and whatnot. I think it's actually quite impressive that people will stick around with Windows, but go through the hoops of getting rid of critical updates sometimes, uh, preventing features from being installed, and actually trying to stop telemetry between actual updates. At that point, you should probably consider switching, because clearly your trust is not in the system. Even under a virtual machine, I don't go through the excesses some of these people do when trying to private Windows or secure it, I guess, for their personal consumption. So this is something where you're going to have to ask, is the risk and reward worth it for me? And I think for most people that I talk to in this situation, probably doesn't seem that way. But anyways, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it, I am out.